still continuing to see a live view of the Soyuz MS-10 on its launch pad in Baikonur, Kazakhstan, where Nick Haig and Alexei Ochinin are waiting for launch, now just 12 minutes and 41 seconds away. The whole Soyuz spacecraft is 23 and a half feet long and weighs 15,650 pounds. It's comprised of three modules. The descent module, situated in the middle of the Soyuz vehicle, contains customized seats, as you can see in this video, for the crew members to use during launch, entry, and landing. It also contains all the controls and displays necessary for the flight, as well as life support systems, batteries for the re-entry and landing, and the parachutes and soft landing rocket engines that slow the Soyuz just before touchdown when it lands in Kazakhstan. There are eight hydrogen peroxide thrusters located on that module that are used to control the spacecraft's orientation or attitude during the descent until parachute deployment. And it also has guidance, navigation, and control system to maneuver the vehicle during the descent phase of the mission. The descent module weighs 6,393 pounds with a habitable volume of 141 cubic feet and approximately 110 pounds of cargo can be returned to Earth in this module. The descent module is the only portion of the Soyuz that re survives the return to Earth. Through a hatch, you can now see the orbital module, which is at the top of the Soyuz, connects to the descent module via that pressurized hatch. It's where the crew has a small amount of room to move around during the flight to the station. It has a volume of 230 cubic feet with a docking mechanism, hatch, and rendezvous antennas located at the front end. The docking mechanism is used to dock to the space station and the hatch allows entry into the orbiting complex. The rendezvous antennas are used by the automated docking system, which uses radar, to maneuver toward the space station for docking. There's also a forward-looking window in the module that the crew can use to take manual measurements of distance and closing speed with a laser rangefinder in the event of a failure with a rendezvous radar system. The propulsion module houses the oxygen storage tanks, the main engine, and the attitude control, control thrusters, avionics, and communications and control equipment. The propulsion portion of this module handles all orbital maneuvers, including those needed for the rendezvous with the space station and the deorbit burn at the end of the spacecraft's mission. Five minutes readiness is Before they are deployed, the two solar arrays that uh, are included on the space station, or on the Soyuz uh, vehicle, are folded up against the body of the propulsion module, which then separates from the descent module after the deorbit burn, along with the orbital module. The solar panels span almost 35 feet. The entire spacecraft serves not only as a crew transport vehicle to and from the space station, but also as an emergency return vehicle in the event of the crew needing to leave the space station unexpectedly. We are watching you, uh, we are seeing you on uh, camera number one. Thanks, Rob. Now back with a live view inside the Soyuz capsule where the crew on board is readying in the final min minutes of uh, their time on Earth before launch today at 3.40 a.m. Central Time, just uh, seven minutes away now. You can see here, Nick Haig at the top of the screen and Alexei Ochinin at the bottom. At this point in the countdown, seven minutes away from launch, uh, the pre-launch operations are complete and the Soyuz first and second stage engines are ready for launch. Also telemetry has been received from the rocket indicating that all primary and backup systems are ready for launch. At the time of launch, again, which is coming up at 3.40 a.m. Central Time, the space station is going to be over northeast Kazakhstan near the Russian border, moving from southwest to northeast with an altitude of about 254 miles above the Earth. It will be about 948 miles in front of the Soyuz. 
launch is precisely time for the moment when the Earth's rotation will place the Baikonur Cosmodrome in the plane of the orbit of the International Space Station. And uh, I will provide the report of the launch. This is Burlak 1. I copy. We are ready for launch. Now under six minutes away from launch. At this point, the launch key has been inserted in the launch bunker, and it is a real key. It transitions the launch from sequence into automatic mode. Launch key inserted. Now less than five minutes away from today's launch. This point, onboard systems will be switched to onboard control and the commander's cockpit displays and controls will be activated. The crew members are closing their helmets now and uh, putting their suit, uh, which will put their suits on oxygen. Run one command, ground measurement system is activated. Combustion chamber nitrogen purge. Fuel lines and other elements of the rocket engines are purged with nitrogen to fireproof them by removing vapors of fuel and oxidizer. Now T minus three minutes and 55 seconds. This is Burlak 1. I copy loud and clear. Uh, it's great. Copy. Getting OK signs and thumbs up from the crew on board this Soyuz there. Uh, Nick Hang and Alexei Ovchinin now three and a half minutes away from today's launch. This will be the first time for Nick Hang to visit the International Space Station and the second for Alexei Ovchinin. Run two command. On board measurement system is activated. Ground fuel and oxidizer nitrogen terminated. This is Burlak. One, three minutes before the liftoff. Everything is well on board. Uh, we are feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Two minutes and 45 seconds away from launch, the booster tank. We pressurize for flight. This optimizes the flow of fuel and helps add structural, structural support to the rocket. Booster propellant tank pressurization initiated. And that call indicating that the pressurization has uh, started for the booster tank, again, optimizing the flow of fuel.
One minute and uh, 15 seconds now until launch. The ground propellant feed has now been terminated. Yes, it's better now, guys. Thank you. And now just one minute to go. Minute Soyuz now on internal power. We may see just a minute or so of uh, in-cabin views, but then we'll switch to external views of the Soyuz during today's flight. Vehicle to internal power. First umbilical tower there uh, separating from the booster. Thirty seconds now until launch. Ground umbilical to the third stage has been disconnected, and in just a moment, the second umbilical tower will separate. Power on board. There's the second tower. Command for ignition, oxygen. Launch command has been issued. Seven, six, five, four, three. Two, one. Engine turbo pump at flight speed. Engines at maximum thrust. Lift off. And there is lift off of the Soyuz MS-10 to the International Space Station, carrying Nick Haig and Alexei Obchinin to the orbital complex. This again is Nick Haig's first time to uh, launch to space, and Alexei Obchinin's second. One copy. Captain is good on board, and we are feeling well. Hearing good first stage performance for the Soyuz, delivering 930,000 pounds of thrust from its four boosters and single engine. In the first stage, the Soyuz measures 68 feet in length and 24 feet in diameter. It's burning liquid fuel for the first two minutes and six seconds of flight. Sixty seconds into the flight. The pressure in the chamber is nominal. Lock one. Copy. Uh, everything is well on board. They're feeling well. Thank you. Copy. Everything proceeding as a. Uh, Intended for today's flight, now just a little over a minute into it, the velocity of the Soyuz is about 1,100 miles per hour. View here of the crew inside the Soyuz now making their way to the International Space Station. Nick Haig there at the top of the screen and Alexei Ochinin at the bottom. Copy. Everything is well on board. The crew is feeling well. Copy. View here of the Soyuz making its way into space. Everything looking good, proceeding nominally. Inaudible. And we have the escape tower for the Soyuz now jettisoned. Everything continuing nominally. Four strap-on boosters have been jettisoned, and they've completed their job, dropped away at an altitude of 28 statute miles. Soyuz traveling about 3,350 uh, 3, miles an hour. Is it emergency booster two minutes 45? Second, the uh, emergency, the failure of the booster. Failure of the booster. BS, yes, BS. Separation. Enable power. Back. 190 seconds into the flight, so he's traveling it's about 4,700 miles per hour. Don't be in a hurry. Burlaki, copy. We are in uh, weightlessness, you know, according to our sensations. 
Сейчас один момент. Нужно. Стэнд бай. Да, Ник. Да, выбери. Бурлаки, do you have F1 illuminated? 11.42.17. Failure. 11.42.17 is the time of the failure. F1 on SP is illuminated. Copy. Okay, the shroud is separated, the crew is feeling well, everything is well on board. We have crew uh, in our hands and the power is on. Copy. So what are the recommendations of the ground? What about the separation? Did the separation go through? Yes, it did. 11.42.55. Like Did you deactivate root power? No. Uh, did you activate the root power? Yes, the root power is on. O N. Now, please send the S command. Ballistic uh, descent command is sent from root controller. Copy. 11.45.30. The S has been sent. We have the indicator illuminated. The overload has started. Yes, we are getting ready for the G load. Time 12.46, G-load is 6.7. Copy. We feeling rotation. The G-load is going down. 18.46, 20. G-load is 2.72 and going down.